yeah, I'm looking for a miracle. I, I just want to announce to you today that, that I'm looking forward to a miracle. And I believe the God that we serve is able to perform it. Because he is God. He is God. He is God and he is able to make it happen. There may be someone in the room today that wondering if God can do it. Let me just report to you that God is able. And he will do it. And he will get the glory. He will do it every time because he's God. He is God all by, all by himself. He is. He is the anointed one who is able to make it happen. Thank God that he is. He is. He is God. And it is that one that we've come to give glory and honor to today. Amen. We call your attention to Matthew chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17. In the New Testament, the book is St. Matthew, the chapter 16. The verses, the chapter is 3, the verses are 16 and 17. St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. When you found it, you will discover these words. When he had been baptized, Jesus came immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. I want to talk about God is well pleased. God is well pleased. Throughout my life, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did, it pleased mama and dad. From age zero to age 56 and 75%, I look forward to God being pleased with me and Mama being pleased. I want to report to you that I have a bad understanding of young folk these days who can talk back to their mom and their dad. I don't understand how they can tell Mama and Dad where to get off, where to stop. I don't understand, and I, it may just be me, and it may not be you, but I don't understand how children can raise their voice at their mom and daddy, and at grown folk, because in my neighborhood, every person that was grown was treated just like mom and daddy. And if they heard of anything that I had said or done away from the house, when it came to the house, the house was in unrest. Yeah, yeah. The house was bad off. There was noise in the house. They said things like, I'm whipping you because I love you. I'm doing this for your better good. Yeah, yeah. And when they talked to us, it was a long, drawn out conversation. And the, I would rather have a whipping than have the conversation. It was so disappointing to me that I had disappointed them because I wanted them to be pleased with me. Oftentimes, we want to please our friends. We want to please other people that mean us no good. But God needs to be pleased with you. The Hebrew writer tells us that it is impossible to please God if you have not faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one who has faith, one that walks with God, that's the one that pleases God. When I talk about faith, I'm talking about the word pistos in the Greek. It means to launch out into the deep without seeing what's there. That's right. This word pistos is illustrated by one walking off a cliff and believing that he will be saved. Let me just stop right here and tell you, I didn't say go walk off a cliff. 
I'm saying when God has unctioned you and spoken to you to obey him for his righteousness, God will always protect and keep you even when you're going through dangers. Because we have a God who's able to do all things well. You see, I, like Paul, have come to the conclusion I am good here. I am here that I will spread the gospel. I'm, I'm good here that I can be a living testimony for others to see. So I'm all right here. But Paul went on to say, if I die, I die in Christ. And I no longer be here, but I will be in the presence of God. I'm all right with that. And Paul continues in his dialogue to say to us today that if I suffer, if I go through suffering for righteousness sake, I'm all right with that too because this present day suffering is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed in Christ Jesus. So we find Matthew writing here and, and he finds himself writing about the great Messiah, Jesus the Christ. And when he writes about Jesus, he talks about the fact that John bore uh, stories of him and foretold his coming. Let me tell you, whenever we are doing things for God, we got to always point to Jesus and not to ourselves. Yeah. Because somebody will always see you doing something good or doing something right, and they will declare that you are the one who has come. We even have a man in the White House that declares, I can save you without a city cross. And he wants to say that he is the Messiah. But my Messiah, Jesus him Christ, and himself has already come. He is Jesus the Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This word Christ means the Messiah, the anointed one. And so in these biblical days, they were looking for a Messiah that will come and rescue them from an evil system. But the Jesus that we serve, not only rescued them from an evil system, he, res he rescued them from a spiritual entanglement. Yeah. Do you know him? His name is Jesus, and he has come to rescue us. When we look at it, Jesus is talking, and he calls those who are caught up there in their religious performances broods of, of vipers, those who, who look good on the outside, but the inside are like dead men's bones and like watch the program. Let me just tell you, everything you see is not what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. And everywhere you go is not where it looks like. It's not as good as it looks like. It is the picture of one that sees a, a resort area on the computer, and it, they have blue, green, and turquoise water, and when you get there, the water is money. Right. It's because it's not always what it looks like. And when we put our trust in other men, it's not what, you, what it looks like because the devil will never approach you with something that's messed up, that doesn't attract you. He always approaches you with something that you already want, something that you already love. He gives us counterfeit and he makes us think it's real. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, you see, drugs doesn't tempt me. All right. Alcohol doesn't tempt me. But the German chocolate calls my name. <laughs> chocolate on the inside. Chocolate on the outside. With nuts on the top. And laced in, the, in a caramel and chocolate on the top. It calls my name. Yes, sir. You see, the devil won't tempt me with other stuff. But he can tempt me with a little chocolate cake. Or a little German chocolate. Or a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. Such it is in the text. We find ourselves in the text right before Jesus gets, gets ready to, to, to be tempted by the devil. In Matthew chapter 3, we find ourselves, we find ourselves looking at, at Matthew chapter 3 where the Bible is clear that Jesus is the center of attention. Let me tell you, in your Christian walk, you need to make sure that Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Whatever in your life that's going on around you, if you don't keep Jesus at the center and the forefront, you're going down a one-way street the wrong way. We need to make sure that we make sure, we need to make sure that we make sure that we keep Jesus as the center of attention. So Matthew in chapter 3, he keeps Jesus 
as the center of attention. John is baptizing here. John doesn't want to baptize Jesus, but Jesus says, go ahead and baptize me for righteousness sake. We end in at verse number 16. We end up at verse number 16 where it says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. That tells us that Jesus wasn't sprinkled. Jesus went down into the water. John went down into the water. John was in a body of water. He dipped Jesus, dipped him in water, and then he came out of the water. This word baptized, this word baptized means it's baptizo in the Greek. This word simply means to change the color of a garment. And what they did in those days, they would take a white garment and baptize it in color water and it will come up a different color. What the analogy here is that when we are baptized, we went in thanking Jesus and thanking him for what he has already done and thanking him for dying on the cross and resurrected on the third day morning. And we tell the whole world, I believe the story and now I'm submitting to baptism. It is right to be baptized. It is right to be dipped under the water. Not sprinkled, not, not water dashed on you, but to be dipped all the way under the water. It says Jesus came straightway. King James would say it like this. He came straightway out of the water, meaning that he was down in the water and he came out of the water. Yeah, yeah. New King James says he came immediately up from the water. And when he came up from the water, you know the devil is busy, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The devil has always planted seeds of doubts in all of us. He has always walked by us right when God is blessing us, right when God is, is, walk, is walking with us and we are walking with him, right when we are about to believe God for something. The devil is known to put doubt in your heart and doubt in your mind. He wants to make you doubt yourself. He wants to make you doubt your spouse. He wants to make you doubt your friends and your family members. He wants to make you doubt that job that he has promised you. We need to make sure that regardless of what the devil is doing, we pay attention to what God is doing. It, it is the picture that's painted when a pastor gets up and he paints a vision before the people and the people would say, well, pastor, what if it doesn't happen? And the pastor responds, what if it does happen? Yes, sir. You see, what the fact is, we are not looking at what does not happen. We are looking at what's going to happen. Yeah. It is the picture of a loved one saying, I'm going to pay my house off. I'm going to be debt free. I'm going to have a car that I want to. And the other part of the, of the couple would say, well, we ain't got enough money to do that. When you operate on money, you do not operate on faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you walk by faith, you can see things before they come. Yeah. The only way to please God and the only way that God will be pleased is that you walk by faith. Yeah. You have to walk by stuff you can't see. It is the picture of a child that's looking forward to walking across the stage and getting his or her diploma, but they don't trust the system enough that they can walk across the stage. They've come to the conclusion they're not smart enough, they're not able to do it, but when you walk in faith, you just get prepared to put your robe on and turn your, your tassel from the right side to the left side because you walk by faith. Yeah. Now let me tell you, if you ain't put anything in all 12 years, you get nothing out. You got, you got to walk by faith and you have to work by faith. Yes, it says that Jesus came straightway out of the water. He came immediately from the water right. and behold, the heavens opened up. Now when Jesus was baptized, just as when you decided to follow God, there are some people that will always doubt you. All right. When you decide to give your life to Christ, when you decide to do the right thing for God, somebody's always watching you and to see how far you're going to run. Yeah, yeah. They're waiting to see how long you're going to last. So such a was in the text, we find that God had to speak for heaven. Let me tell you, when God speaks on your behalf, God is speaking. And when God speaks, all of the earth and heaven has to uh, recognize that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank God that he's speaking in my life. Thank God that he's speaking up for me. And let me tell you, you don't have to involve yourself in every fight. Let God fight your battles for you. Yeah. Thank God that when a Christ that walks with him, when you walk with God, God is able to speak for you. God spoke from heaven. 
God is such an awesome God. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Every now and then, he reveals himself. All right. And when he reveals himself, so many other miracles have already taken place that you have thought that there was just natural being. You woke up this morning. That's a miracle in itself. Yeah. You slept somewhere all night long or part of the night. That's a miracle in itself. You closed your eyes and you went to sleep. That's a miracle in itself. Simply because even though you close your eyes, you don't have to get sleep. I told you last week, you can have a kid, cow king bed and never get a rest of sleep. Not a given mess of sleep at all because you have something to lay in or lay on. Behold, the heavens were open to him. God will open up heaven for you if you just walk with him. God wants to be pleased with you. God wants you to, to reach your goal. God wants you to, to do things that you always dream of doing. God wants you on one card with him. You just got to walk with him. You have to have faith in him. You got to believe that he is God. Men that are blessed of God believe that he is God. Not because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Yeah, yeah. He is. He is God. So God speaks from heaven. The heavens open up. And there's a voice that comes from heaven. Jesus sees the dove-shaped image. The Holy Spirit lights on him as if he is a devil. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit he, yeah, yeah. not the Holy Spirit it. All right. He is the third person of the triune God. All right. The Holy Spirit he, and let me just stop here and park here and let you know, the Holy Spirit ain't going to hit you. Yeah, all right, yeah. He dwells in you. Yeah, all right. He speaks to you. The Holy Spirit didn't make you run and shout. It's your spirit and the Holy Spirit got together and you chose to celebrate with him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. See, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an a it. You can't call him the Holy Spirit it. Yeah. All right. The Bible says the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove, like a dove, as a symbol of a dove. It was a symbol that God is with you. Every now and then, God will show other folk and show us that he's with us. Yeah. Let me tell you, when things that, that you can't accomplish on your own, God is with you. Yeah. It says that the Holy Spirit, he saw the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, descending like a dove in a lighting upon him, All right. and suddenly a voice came. There are only a few times that the Bible reveals the Trinity all in one place. There's only, there are only a few times when God the Father was present, God the Son was present, and God the Holy Spirit was present. And this is one of those times. The Bible says that Jesus was present. He came straightway out of the water. He came immediately out of the water. Jesus, the Son of God, is present. The, the Bible says that heaven opened up and the voice came from heaven. Who you think the voice was from? God is present. God began to speak. Let me tell you, when God speaks, God gets our attention. Yes, so God was there. And thirdly, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God was present. He shows up there and God says to us, as he said to men of those days, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. He is the unique son of God. When you look at John chapter 3, verse 16, it, it, says, it says to us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This word begotten in the Greek means his only unique son, his only one-of-a-kind son. There is no son like this son. All right. There's not one like this one. There, you can't look at Moses or Abraham and say they were like him because Abraham was a liar. Moses was a, was a murderer. And let me tell you, and then Noah got drunk. All right. There's not a man like him. Regardless of, of what men do and regardless of what men say, there is none like the Son of God. He is God's only unique Son. He is God's only begotten Son. He is God's only one of a kind Son. Some presidents would walk in this room, and men would stand up. Well, 
I said something. Yes, sir. Some presidents would walk in the room and men would stand up. But if Jesus showed up, yeah, yeah. All right. men, women, boys, and girls would have to buy down. You see, you honor other men, but you worship your God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank him for being in our lives. He has given us the privilege of worshiping him. It is a privilege to worship the almighty God himself. Men don't understand how he can be three in one. Well, some things you won't understand until we get that. So we can't compare him to ice and say that he's water at one temperature, he's ice at another temperature, he, he's liquid at one temperature, he's steam at the other temperature. Those things don't compare to him because there's none like him. He is the triune God. He's God all by himself and we don't understand it. And it doesn't matter how educated you get, you can't explain God. You just got to trust him and walk with him. He's God. And then if I would say I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a man, that doesn't compare to God. He's three persons at the same time. Yeah. When we look at Jesus, he is, he's just as much God as God and just as much man as man. Yes. And so Jesus is the only image that we see of God because he's an invisible image. Uh, he is the visible image of an invisible God. Yeah. And as we walk with him, we get to see a touch of God. No man has seen God and lived. Because the moment we look in the face of God, we are out of here. We give up the ghost. We are dead. But I'm looking forward to the day where I can see him for myself. You ought to look forward to the day. You got, you got to admit that, that mama told you about this Jesus. You got to admit that your friends talk about this Jesus. You need to tell God that, God, I know that they have said stuff about Jesus, but I want to see you for myself. Oh, it's going to be a great morning when I see him for myself. I, some of y'all talking about it. When I get to heaven, I want to see Big Mama. I, I want to see Moses. I want to see Adam. I don't care about none of that because our relationships on the other side are different anyway. You, you can talk about your loved one dead and gone and you're going to see them again. That's not my concern. My concern, when I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus. And I want to see him face to face. Yeah. Somebody, somebody said the other day, I want to see Adam because he got us in this mess. Well, Adam was a lot stronger than you are, and you get yourself in some mess. Let me just share with you. I'm not looking to see any man other than the one who died for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, maybe you never fell in the water All right. like I have. And went down three times, and every time I tried to swim, the vine wrapped around my leg. And I tried to walk, and I step on a rock, the rock gives away. Out in the middle of a, of a lake. And there was a guy that came up that didn't look like me. He handed me a post and he a pole and he pulled me out and he coaxed me out. He said, Don't stand on that rock, step on this one. And what you do is don't don't try to swim right there. Wait till you get through the vines and then step on here. Let me just share with you. The people on the bank can see more than you can see because you're tangled up in your mess. The problem is we get tangled up in our mess. We get so tangled up in, in our mess until we can't see how, how filthy it is in the mess. But the folk on the outside can see. That's why they told you, don't marry that boy. Don't get in touch with him. Leave him alone. Because they can see stuff that you will never see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're not tied up in it. They're not tangled up in it. Yeah, yeah. That's why the senior saints would say, don't ride with it. Don't even go around it. Don't go around his house. Because when they pull you over, when they pull him over, they pull you over. Yeah, yeah. And these days, brothers and sisters, it ain't good to be pulled over right. in this climate. All right. These days, it's bad to be riding with the wrong joker in this climate. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because if things can be made bad for you because of something somebody else said. We're in a terrible climate today. we got to stick with Jesus. That's why children ought to be packing out the church instead of packing out the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a climate where we need Jesus and Jesus alone. It says, a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well." God is saying to us today, he wants to be pleased with us. First of all, he wants us to walk by faith. Yes. All right. 
Secondly, we want, he wants us to continue to trust him and what he says in his word. Sure, you're right. The Hebrew writer says in times past, right. he spoke to us through the prophets. Right. But now he's speaking to us through his son and through his word. All right. God delivered me from the preacher that will try to say it without talking about the word. We have preachers all over the place that's making people promises, laying their hands on them and saying, in the morning you will be blessed. Every time I see a post that says, if you click this and share this, uh, your blessing is on the way. Let me tell you, financial blessings will run you down in the morning. I just stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know the only way you get financial blessings the right way is that you work last week and get paid this week. The, the, the best way to, to guarantee financial blessings, brother, not allowed, is to, is to work last week and get paid this week. Young people need to know that you work hard now so you can lay around later. You don't lay around now and think you're going to get paid later. That's too hard of a work. Man, you need a muscle every now and then, and you won't get a muscle unless you work hard. Right. Right. Says foolishness. If you don't depend on the word, when you're going to court, read your word. When things are going well for you, read your word. When, when the house is at peace, study your word. Because there's a storm on the horizon. A songwriter would say it like this, there's a storm over the ocean, and it's moving this away. Super Tuesday is coming, there's a storm over the ocean, and it's moving this away. If you're not anchored in Jesus, you will surely slip away. Even our song that we sing now has no real meaning when it comes to the word. We, we sing songs that sound good, that make us be bop, and we've forgotten about guide me over thy great Jehovah peer him through this barren land. I was weak and thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. We've forgotten that, that God has promised us that we let our light shine down here. He'll bless us down here and he will bless us on the other side. We have forgotten amazing grace. And we've forgotten that how sweet it sounds. We've forgotten that it was God's amazing grace that has kept us. We think it's our education. We, we think it's our money. We think it's because we're so fine and so good looking. We, and it's because we, we did the right things at the right time. Don't you know the stock market can be up today and down today? It can be up this minute and down this minute. We think our 401k is going to save us. Let me tell you, without God on your side, your 401k will disappear. Yes, yes, yes. Says, suddenly a voice came from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Do you want God to be pleased with you? Yes. Do you want God to, to really recognize you and, and be you, see you and say, this is my beloved son in whom, my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased? Yes. Yeah. Well, let me share you the danger here. He was pleased with Job. Job had his children intact. He studied and prayed and and he was walking with the Lord. He was minding his own business. He was a rich man, the richest man in all. And not only was he rich, he was also faithful to God. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Don't let folk tell you because you're faithful to God that trouble will not find his way to your house. That's right. That's right. If you're not in trouble now, just give it two seconds. <laughs> trouble is on his way. Because you're either coming out of trouble, you're in trouble, or you're headed for trouble, or trouble is headed for you. Job had it going on. God, he was one of God's children. So God said, devil, have you considered my servant Job as you've been walking to and from? Yeah, yeah. And why God put me on the spot like that? Why? Now, God, I'm doing what you've asked me to do. But let me tell you, there must be some rain that will fall on the just as well as the unjust. Job lost his children. Mm -hmm. Lost his livestock. Mm -hmm. Lost his health. And lost his wife. Why don't you just cuss God and die? He said, woman, you talk like a foolish woman. Yeah, yeah. And then Job began to question God. Uh -huh. God, God, uh, I cursed the day I was born. The Bible said God rolled 
back the stones of heaven yeah, yeah, yeah. and talk to, to, to Job all by himself. Yeah, yeah. Said, Job, where were you? All right, yeah. When I took the embers of my power right. in the midst of darkness and, and, and I spoke and light showed up. Job, where were you? Yeah, See, yeah, sometimes yeah. we can get so holy until we think that we are God on our own. In, in the chemical plant that when you get to be the head operator they call you the god of your department because you have been there 20 30 years and you know where every pipe is you know what every chemical makeup should be so they have the audacity to say oh go over there to the liquefaction area this guy over here is the god of that area mm -hmm. don't you know i couldn't bring myself to call any man a god because if a man is worshipped as God, then that means that man is able to take the place of God. But let me tell you, when the explosion took place, they didn't know they no longer called on the man that they called God. They began to bow their heads and call on the Almighty God. Because God is the one who keeps us when explosions take place. God, God wants to be pleased with us. How can God be pleased with us? How? We have to walk with him. We have to trust him. We have to have faith in, faith in him. And we have to make sure that God makes a way for us that we can't make for ourselves. And we have to understand that very well. So we see, we see Jesus, the Son of God. We see the Holy Spirit, the, the third person of the triune God. And, and we see Almighty God himself talking. I close with this. If you want God to be pleased with you, right. don't fight every battle. Yes, sir. Don't cuss every cusser. All right. Don't act every kind of way other folk act. Yeah, yeah. Just walk with God. That's right. And when you walk with God, God will fight your battles for you. Yes, and yes. God will do the things that you can't do on your own. Yes. Every time. Just be faithful to him. I see people just in and out of goodness, in and out of righteousness, right. in and out of godliness, in and out of the church, and they don't trust God. They trying to make a way. Don't you know if you wasn't able to make a way for the last five years, you ain't going to be able to do it for the next five years until you submit unto the almighty God. All right. Even Jesus himself, after John submitted to Jesus, Jesus submits to God. All right. yeah. Yeah. And God is pleased. Yes, we can't get to a point where we find ourselves so satisfied with who we are. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we know that we, we got everything going for us. Yeah. We got to trust God. Right. And only when we trust Him, yeah. Yeah. only when we walk with Him, yeah. will God be faithful to us as we are faithful to Him. Yeah. I say to you today, my family, yeah. whatever you do, be faithful to the Almighty God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Don't let folk turn you off. Don't let, don't let situations turn you off. All right. Trust in God and stay faithful to him and walk with him. And the blessings you've been looking for, God will give you more than you even expected. All right. Just trust him. Jesus trust him. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus himself took a tree and trusted him. They nailed him. Yes, they did. He died. All right. On a tree. Yes, he did. Yeah. They took him off the tree. Yes. They laid him in a bar tomb. Jesus trusted him while he laid there. Jesus told them before he left here, in three days I will raise this temple up again. Right. They thought they were talking, he was talking about the building, but he was talking about the temple. And in three days he got up with all power in heaven and earth. And all right, all right. What it says to us that you can't put. Dr. King would say, you can't keep a good man down unless you get in the mud with him. Yeah, yeah. You need to understand that Jesus will not only raise from the dead, he will not only rise from the dead, he will raise you from the dead. Yes, he will. A lot of us are in dead situations. That's right. But God want to be pleased with you. All right. Will you let God be pleased with you? On, God, will you God. trust Come him? On, will you commit to him? Will you acknowledge him? Will you walk with him? He's God all by himself. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come to Jesus just as you are? The door is open. Will you come? The door is open. Will you come to Jesus?
If, if you're here and you don't, you haven't trusted Jesus, you, you, have not, you have not submitted yourself to him, believing in his son, Jesus the Christ, this is your moment. The door is open. Will you come? Come to Jesus, just as you are. The door is open. If you're here today and you struggle with commitment, this is your moment to recommit to him, to rededicate to him. The door is open. Will you come? I want God to be pleased with me. I want him to be well pleased with me. Will you trust him? The door is open. He will save you. Just him. I recommend this one where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. The door is open. Will you come? The door is open. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. Father God, we thank you now. We bless you, man. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus, the great example of righteousness. We ask you to bless us now and keep us as we walk with you. And bless us, Father God, to be faithful and committed to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. And we thank him for who he is and what he has done. It is time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. We're just glad that God has given us the privilege to give to Him. We thank God for the privilege of giving to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, uh, they have two sets of envelope. One is white and blue for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And the other one is uh, white and red. And so we want to make sure that you choose the one or two of your choice. Let me thank those who joined us by live broadcast. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Chiramai Road. If you want to join us in our offering, you can do so by keying in on our cash tag. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. NBC Souls. Thank you so much, and God bless you. We serve.